Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I will show you how to paint the Gottesar Harvester. The miniature is sub-assembled and primed in Zandri dust. The first color I'm using is Celestial Grey. And I am base painting all the skulls between the neck ribs, the inner skulls of the torso and on the tights and also on the arms. It is not a problem if the paint goes over some other bone areas. Later on, once the spiritual energy is done, I will repaint them with Zentry dust. After that, I'm using Nihilike Oxide Technical and cover all the painted skulls. I am trying to be as neat as possible, but there are some parts where it is difficult to cover only those parts, therefore I find it the best to start on the miniature from the inside painting, the spiritual parts, and then after work on the bone areas. I give it a wash using Collier Green Shade mixed with Lamia Medium, a 1 to 3 part ratio. The Collier Green Shade is one of the best washes to use it on spiritual effects, in my opinion. However, it is too strong wash. Now I could use water to dilute it, but water makes it less contrast. So, with Lamia Medium, it is diluted enough but the color of the wash stays quite well, which makes the better blend on the, this destined area. Once the wash is completely dry, I dry brush the skulls with Otho and Grey. Some of the skulls, which are more visible, such as 
the rib area. I layered them with also in grey. Just to give them more highlight. And finishing them with Wave Watcher Green Glaze. And glaze them gently, cover all the spiritual skulls. Mainly I use it on the recesses, but also it is good to cover some of the parts where the Uthuan Grey turned out to be too bright. So to blend it well with the whole concept of making them look more spiritual energy. The spiritual scars on are finished, I glued the torso together and after that I repainted the mistakes with sandry dust. I am giving Agrax Earth Shade Wash on the whole miniature. I am giving a second wash, mainly on the spines, the end of the tail, and also the lower spine jaw part. I am making them a bit more darker, so I am giving a third wash onto these areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Morgas Bone and start dry brushing all the bone areas except the spines the end of the tail I'm using Zendry Dust on these leftover areas. I am still using Morgas Bone and this time I'm layering so that all the dry brushed area gives already a nice transition from dark to bright so I just want to make 
there are more sharper features on the bones are to have a bit more brighter color brighter transition even with this color so that it blends really well Now I'm gonna use uh, Screaming Skull and start highlighting. In some of the areas I will be going a little bit over because this paint is super bright. It really pops out actually. as you can see So now I'm going back with Morgus Bone again and just try to blend all those parts where the Screaming Skull actually popped out too much in my own honest opinion. So in this case it kind of really blends the two together. There is a, a nice natural transition going on between the two Also dry brushing all the cart bones. With the white scar I give a extra fine highlight on all the bone areas. don't need too much um, I in here basically I added too much some of the places so I had to go back and use Morgus bone just to reduce that amount of extra white so I highly recommend just a very little amount, just on the sharpest features.
Now the boner is finished, I'm using Mechanical Standard Grey and start base painting all the areas such as the cart fence, the claws, the nails, the teeth, the banner and also the bone part of the armor plates. I am using Null Oil only on the cart fence, the teeth, the claw, I'm leaving the armor plates and the banner as it is, I have some other wash to give it to. Agrox Earthshade is the wash that I want to use on the armor plates, the banner, but also I am giving a wash with this onto the cart fence, the claws and also the teeth. After the Agrox Surf Shade is dried, I'm adding Null Oil again and the same as before where I added the first layers, so the cart fence, the claws, the teeth, so that it gets a really nice dark old bone effect. that the washes are dry I'm going back with mechanical standard grey and just start dry brushing all the fence bone the ribs and also using it as as a layer on the smaller details such as the teeth and the claws. Mm -hmm. 
moving on to downstone I am giving a fine highlight in all the darker areas Now I'm using dry brush technique with the dawn stone and I'm dry brushing all the armored plates, bones areas and also the banner. After that I am gonna be start layering also these armor plates. So it really gets a nice, brighter transition. I am using now Administratum Grey and start highlighting all the bone armor plates and also the banner. And with also and Grey, I'm giving an extra fine highlight by dry brushing on all these areas. So I can now move on to the cart itself. So I'm using Caraber Crimson mixed with Lamion Medium, a 1 to 3 mix ratio. And start dabbing it. All the recesses and 
some of the sides and corners just to have that lighter uh, pinkish transition with the bones and I'm gonna be using now only Karabur Crimson once that the first layer is dried and just trying to put in some of the deepest areas this wash so that it really gives that fleshy just torn off the bones fresh ready for use effect now I'm gonna be adding a little bit onto the side as well so that it gives a little bit of flowing effect moving on to contour blue and start base painting all the armor plates I want to give a bit more of purplish color for these armor plates, so I'm using Druki Violet and start wash all these areas. Going back with counter blue, and now that the Druki violet wash is completely dry, I just dry brush in some of the areas, mainly the center part of the armor. Counter blue and rust gray are one to one mix so that it has a thinking of to make a nice transition so all the highlighting I'm starting to do with this all these armor plates This I'm using only rust grey and with this just where the sharpest features are.
and the fine highlight only the sharpest edges with some bahar of blue don't need too much just a very little bit I am using Stonehouse Silver on all the buttons, on all these armor plates and the armor is finished. I am using now Iron Rack Skin just base paint all the flesh part of the hand as you can see I glued the head already also I am giving a wash with Draken of Nightshade mixed with Lamium Medium, a 1 to 3 mix ratio. Once the wash is completely dry, I'm going back with Iron Rack Skin and start layering the flesh parts. I start highlighting with them with Deep Kim Flesh. I'm giving another wash, this time right on Flesh Shade. Where the bone area is, I try to leave it with Zendry dust and also just a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm using Caraber Crimson wash and all the flesh and the bone area a little bit more towards where are the open wounds are as well. So just to really have that flashy effect. Now I'm using Blood for the Blood God and use this technical onto the, all the open wounds, the recesses and also I'm using it on the cart so that to make the cart look really nasty and gory I'm trying to also use a dry brush and just dip in some of the areas I'm using Waywatcher Green on the eyes of the model which is been base painted with white scar on the Stormcast helmet I'm using Retributor armor and just base painting it I'm using Reikland flesh shade gloss so to have a nice shinier effect on the helmet
and I'm highlighting it with Stormhost Silver, the helmet. And finishing it with some blood for the blood god. The crows, I'm base painting them with abandoned black. After that I am dry brushing the crows with Dark Reaper. I wash it with Drakenhof Nightshade Wash. And going back with Dark Reaper again and just highlighting the main areas of the wings and the body of the crow. On the banner I am using Incubi Darkness and start base painting the whole banner. Then I'm using Colia Green Shade Wash and just wash the whole area. Once the wash is dry, I'm using Incubi Darkness and Cover Light Green, a one to one mix. And first I start dry brushing it and then where are the sharpest features of the banner I'm start layering it. Then I start highlighting with Cyberite Green and Cavalite Green, a one to one mix. And then finishing it with Cyber Eye Green only and giving an extra fine highlight.
On the straps I'm using corn red. With Noon Oil, I wash all the corn red paste areas. And once the wash is dry, I'm using Mosdaka Red and start layering all the straps. And with Gorthor Brown, I start highlighting all the sharpest features of the straps. With Balthazar Gold, I start base painting all the gold details on the miniature such as on the back the soul gem area holder also on the shoulder pads the case is and also the emblem on the banner I am using the Brightland Flash Shade only on the banner symbol. And Agrax Earth Shade on the rest of the gold details. With Retributor Armor, I start highlighting the banner emblem. And with Psychorex Bronze, I highlight all the rest of the gold details. I start base painting all the black soul trap gems with abandoned black. Then I'm using Mechanical Standard Grey and start highlighting.
giving a fine highlight with Dawnstone. And at the very center, just a dot of Administratum Grey. And then I'm sealing them with Art Coat, just to make that nice shiny stone effect. I am watering down quite heavily White Scar, so it's quite like a wash consistency, and start painting all the runes. Once the paint is completely dry, I'm using Waywatcher Green Glaze and start painting all these rooms again. Then I'm using Irial Yellow and again I heavily water it down so it flows really well and again filling up all those rooms. And I am adding Lamenter's yellow glaze. The spiked bludgeons, I start base painting them with Abaddon black. Then with Necron Compound I dry brush all the Abaddon Black area. I'm giving a Null Oil wash. And with Stormhost Silver, I gently highlight some of the sharpest features, some cracks on the bludgeons. And with this, the whole miniature is done. If you would like to see some how to make base as well for these miniatures, do let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and will be helpful for you to paint your own God is our harvester. Do give a like and subscribe for more. Cheers!